We are taking you on a trip into the future to visit galaxies millions of light years away, which means astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is here. Yeah, he is. He's the host and executive science editor of the third Cosmos season called Cosmos Possible Worlds. And one of the places he visits is Enceladus, where he dives below the surface of one of Saturn's moons. Take a look. What the leading space scientists think we might find when we send a spacecraft to dive straight into the heart of Enceladus. Okay. I mean, I know, I know you're here to promote it, but you got to tell us what you find. Well, so, <laughs> well, I don't mean to reveal a secret, but that was all green screen. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's back from Saturn. He is back from Saturn. <laughs> Didn't really go to Saturn yeah. on that one. Um, uh, Enceladus, it's one of the places in the solar system, it's a moon, where that has an ocean of liquid water beneath a frozen layer of ice. And one of NASA's mantras over the years has been, if you're going to look for life, let's first look for water. Because water everywhere on Earth, if you look closely enough, there's life there. So are you saying there's life there? No, we're saying if we're going to find life as we know it, that's a good place to start. And so in the show, that's one of the places we explore. I was saying to you before we went on that I was introduced to you by my youngest son. And it, you were the first person that made really complex science understandable. And I said to you, is that difficult? And you said, yeah, really. Well, <laughs> it's, what makes it difficult is... To, uh, if you don't invest effort in it, then you can sound like you're dumbing it down. And I don't ever want to dumb something down. That, that's lazy to dumb something down. What you want to do is find out how people are thinking about the world. Find what access points into their brain wiring. And then you bring authentic science to that, and then it can mesh, and the person feels enlightened. And one of the hallmarks, one of the DNA strands of Cosmos is nobody's lecturing. I'm not lecturing to you there. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm here and you're there. No, we're on a journey together. Bring us along for yeah. the ride. Along for the ride. Yeah. That is the part of the, the soul of the show. There are, you know, we've we've actually used some of our own effects. I here. love what you've done. Thank with the place. you. Yeah. But this show is it's full of effects. Other than the entertainment value, obviously. What do you want folks to take away? Oh, by the way, just a, a comment on the effects. Uh, our uh, our visual effects supervisor yeah. is like he's been tapped for big budget movies. Right? Oh, I'm we've, sure. We've had people coming to us for a television documentary that have storytelling talent that previously had only been tapped for big budget films. So when you when science becomes the story that you're telling, then it, it the entire uh, experience for the viewer is enhanced by this. And so what do I want you to take away? Possible worlds. It's a sense of what can our future be? It's not just, oh, I hope it becomes that. It's I will make it that because I'm now enlightened by the science and technology that can halt the damage we're doing and give us a place that our kids will be proud of rather than embarrassed by. Neil Very quickly, are you excited? Are you, do you feel okay about our planet? <laughs> okay, all right. We don't have time for that answer. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You can see the two hour premiere of Cosmos Possible Worlds Monday night he said on he's National hopeful. Geographic. He said he's hopeful. Oh, good. Oh, it's a good spot to end on. Okay. Come back. Excellent. Thank I you. I love what they did with the place. We'll be right back. Ooh. Thanks.